Good morning everybody. This is Sam from October CMS. Welcome back to part two of this video series where we render the dynamic menu we built in the previous video. Now, if you haven't seen the previous video, I recommend checking it out first. Otherwise, let's keep moving and bring this dynamic menu to life. Okay, so if you'll remember in the last video, we built a main menu system. And here you can see we've got the main menu item defined already. And if we open a new tab in the editor, you can see we also have the blueprint for that menu system defined. So what I want you to do is navigate down to the items field that we created before, and you can see it has a title and also a URL. Let's change the type for the URL to page finder. Now page finder is a special form widget that lets you choose from a predefined selection of links. And you can also insert custom URLs as well. It'll just enhance our form a little bit. We also might want to go to the top of the blueprint and set the page finder property to false. What that will do is that will prevent our menus from appearing in menus, which is an undesirable effect. So we'll go ahead and save this blueprint now and also migrate it to the database. Then returning to the menu entries that we have here, we'll open the main menu, select items. And then when you open a menu item, you can see we have the page finder field here. So if we click replace, instead of providing a manual URL, we can select a CMS page instead. So we can search for the contact page and select that instead. And now what this does is it means if the URL were to ever change, the menu won't need to be updated because this will create a link to the object, not to the hard coded URL. Uh, you can also use this to search and quickly find what you want. So if we change the about link, you can search all the references and just find the CMS page that way. So it's, it's pretty convenient and it also makes the linkage uh, a lot more robust. Alrighty. So now comes the fun part. Let's render the menu on a page. So the first thing we might like to do here is create a new page. So under the pages menu item in the CMS section, click on the pages item and select new page. We'll call this page main menu demo. And we'll also set the layout to external. Now we'll save the page and we'll create a container for our content. Give it a padding on the bottom and a nice large font size. And we'll also put a header in there as well. And let's just call this my menu. So we'll save that. Now you probably want to use a partial for this, but in this demo, we'll use a page just to, to show how it works. So let's preview this page. And you can see the My Menu title there, and we are good to go. So the first thing we should do is add a component to the page that references our main menu that we created. From the toolbar, select Components, then under Tailor, add the Section Component. We'll need to configure this component. We'll change the alias to Menu. That's the variable that this component will be when it's injected into the page. The handle is already set to our menu blueprint. Select the lookup column as a slug, and we'll need to find the slug for our main menu. And it's located here in the publisher screen. Copy that to the clipboard and then paste that in as the value. If we wanted to use a URL parameter for the lookup value, we would select this external parameter name button here. And then you can just type in the parameter name that would be in the URL. But in this case, we're going to hard code the slug. So we'll just leave it like that and then click save. So what this component does is it injects the menu variable into the page. So if we dump the menu.items variable to the page, you can see that we can inspect the items that we have here. And those are the menu items that were created from before. Now let's render the menu as HTML. We'll do that using an unordered list. And each list item should have a link inside. 
just like that. So the first thing we should do as well, instead of dumping the debug information, we'll set the items to a variable. We'll say set items equals menu dot items. Now let's spin over each item. So we'll say for item in items. And then each link will be referenced from the item within that loop. So the field name we gave the URL was item.url and then the field name for the link is item.title. We also need to use the link content filter and that's because we use the page finder form widget inside the menu items. So let's go and save that and preview the page and you can see it's rendered our menu. But there's one thing that's missing. If you actually look at our menu here, in the management screen, you can see that the about page lives under the contact us page. So we'll need to implement nesting. And to do that, we'll change the query slightly. So where it has set items, we'll include an extra little part here that says to nested. Now what this does is it changes the items to a nested structure. You can find more about this in the documentation. But if you refresh the page now, you can see that the about page is now gone. And that's because it lives under the contact us item. So in order to render the children underneath, we'll need to create another set of nodes in our list item here. So we'll go exactly like we did before, create another set of list items, and then we'll say for child item in item dot children and then loop over those. We'll do it exactly the same as we did uh, with the other link, except in this case, we're looking for the child item. So we'll just replace item with child item. All right, so let's have a look at what that looks like. And there you go, you can see it's rendered a nested unordered list inside the parent list item as you would expect. All right, so that brings us to the end of this guide. I hope you enjoyed seeing firsthand how easy it is to create a dynamic menu structure using October CMS. Wishing you an incredible journey ahead in building with October CMS. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.